Hi, I'm Ed Amorosa from Tag Cyber, and I'm here with my friend Guido Ronchetti, who is the CTO of XTN Cognitive Security. And I guess I should say ciao. Well, welcome to uh, New ciao, York. Ciao, Ed. <laughs> nice to see you. How are you, Guido? Nice to see you. Hey, let's I'm start. Good. Tell us a little bit about XTN, and then we'll get into your background and the platform and the technology. XTN is a <clears throat> security vendor focused on fruit prevention. Mm. So uh, we came from Italy, mm. and uh, we are a quite young company, but with a very long experience in fraud prevention and in banking environment as well. Uh, we are a creative mm -hmm. staff, right. and uh, <clears throat> we think we have some very interesting technology in our portfolio. Well, that's wonderful. Hey, let's talk about you. So, um, how did you get into this? You, you studied computer science. I, mean, I studied uh, computer yeah. science, mm -hmm. but I had quite a strange uh, path to yeah. the security. <laughs> So I started working with a sound engineer uh, mm. quite a lot of years ago in 2008 mm. and till 2012 I was working in that, in that field right. uh, <clears throat> and in, the, in my spare time I was uh, developing uh, some uh, secure wallet app for right. iOS. So <clears throat> I was one of the first uh, on, on, uh, on the iOS platform to design this kind of uh, cryptographically secure password managers mm. uh, to store your, your secure quantities. And after that, uh, after my first child was born, <coughs> I decided to switch my hobby mm -hmm. to my uh, full day uh, job right. and vice versa. <coughs> so in 2012, I started uh, working as a security consultant, mm -hmm. specifically on the mobile security topic. And then in 2014, uh, XTN was born and I was one of the first employees of the company. That's exciting. And, and, and it's really wrapped in stopping fraud and online kind of interactions, yeah. and banking. And uh, so our on, right? team comes from a long experience in fraud prevention. Yeah. We started up in 2008. Yeah. And by the time we were working as integrators with one of the biggest to yeah. top 20 banks in Europe, <clears throat> and we had this. Uh, long uh, experience working uh, side by side with their fraud analyst in order to uh, design their custom-made mm -hmm. transaction monitoring solution. And from that experience, we got the, the knowledge regarding uh, how frauds works in a banking environment and what banks need <coughs> from a process point of view. Mm -hmm. There are lots of people involved. That that's not an easy process. There are multiple actors and uh, multiple phases that are part right. of the process. And so <clears throat> from that experience, uh, the team of XTN was born. And in 2014, uh, we decided that it was time to uh, create a company dedicated to it. And uh, here we are. <laughs> well, you had some success quickly, right? You, I think you're at the point now where you've got probably more than half the banking uh, business in uh, in Italy, right? You you, yeah. you guys have uh, some 50, 52 uh, yeah, percent. Yeah, that, 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 that's like correct. That. We that's have about 22, uh, 52, 53 percent that's of quite a, that's uh, online quite a banking users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say that we are uh, well established yeah. in, in Italy uh, from uh, the the banking environment perspective, and. Uh, for that reason, two years ago, we decided to move outside Italy and to try to approach different markets uh, like Southern Europe, but we are actually mm -hmm. working in Spain as well, and Latin America by the time. Yeah. And last year, we decided to, to start uh, expanding to the UK and US as well. And so uh, that, that's very interesting because we are seeing the, the fraud phen phenomenon mm. from a global perspective. And you know, each, each region has quite different uh, uh, trends going on from a fraud perspective. But at the end of the day, the problems are the same. So uh, we are seeing that our experience that comes from the European market and from that kind of uh, needs is, uh, is absolutely uh, valuable also mm, outside the European similar. environment. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you also do business in Latin, Latin America, I guess, a little different, right? Probably the it, fraud experience may be a little different. It's, it's a very virulent yeah. <laughs> environment, I would <laughs> wow. say. So they had a, a huge problem with frauds. Yeah. And quite a quite lot of uh, technological threads, as well as uh, traditional uh, uh, real-world frauds, uh, much more right. uh, related to human interaction and you know, uh, forger, forgering of documents and stuff like that. But 
uh, from a technological perspective, they are quite advanced uh, in, in what they are seeing from uh, a malware threats perspective, for example. Mm -hmm. And they are so many, uh, th their banks are so big, so many users and so many volumes of transaction that is very difficult to, to approach this market uh, with something that is uh, uh, usable in that kind of environment. Now, help me, the, is the idea here that uh, your technology, are you analyzing behaviors? Is that more or less yeah. the, the way it works? You're looking, learning from behaviors, and trying to determine if something um, fraudulent is happening. Is that the idea? Exactly. Our approach is to have an, an holistic approach to fraud prevention. And this is very important in our vision. We think that there are different layers that we can uh, and we have to, to address in order to have uh, a, a, a valuable fraud prevention flow. One of them is, for, of course, uh, uh, behavior of the user. So from the very beginning, we started using machine learning in order to evaluate uh, affinity and anomaly signals in the user behavior or in the whole population accessing the service. But in the same time, we realize that there are other layers that are as important as well. Uh, I'm thinking about the technological layer related to the endpoints that are used to access the service. I'm thinking about the digital identity topic. That is something that is very important to verify. Mm. And I'm thinking about the business content of the transaction as well. That is another aspect that is very important uh, to be analyzed. And our vision is that these different layers have to be uh, evaluated together to corroborate one with each other in order to have a full picture of what is going on inside the, tr the event or the transaction that mm -hmm. we are considering. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would define our uh, XCN uh, Cognitive Security Platform as a multi-layer, multi-channel solution because our idea is to have a unique uh, technology being able to correlate data coming from very different layers of, of analysis and different channels. Think about uh, uh, TPPs, e-commerce site, online mm. banking, mobile banking, uh, uh, point of sales. All this information have to be cross-analyzed because your digital footprint uh, is in all these channels at the same time. So yeah. if you are able to have a cross uh, cross-channel evaluation, this will be much more precise regarding your behavior and your, your actions as well. Now tell me about multi-factor authentication. That's a part of the solution. I think you call it SA. Yeah, is that co correct. How, how does that work? How does that, uh, so uh, our approach to multi-factor authentication was to design a product that was a state-of-the-art from mm -hmm. a user exper experience right. perspective. So right. uh, one of the main threats today is phishing. And this is what is a very important point uh, starting to design SA that stands for smart authentication. So we were thinking about something that could be used as a multi-factor authentic, a full multi-factor authentication mechanism without having any quantities that could be fished by the end user. Uh, and by that I mean uh, an OTP code. We were designing SA mm. to have something that could be working under the hood without anything visible to the end user and without the need of any kind of interaction with the end user. Uh, so SA is designed to be invisible, to be mm -hmm. as, as uh, uh, transparent as possible inside the interaction between the end user and the service. And in the same time, as in, inside is uh, our um, endpoint protection technology. And so we are providing multi-factor authentication relying on a software token app that is continuously monitored from a security perspective mm -hmm. as well. That's outstanding. And includes behavior analytics uh, as part of the uh, identity flow we, we are uh, considering. Tell me how, the, um, how MORE works. MORE stands for Mobile Operative Risk Evaluator yeah. and is a, a real-time risk evaluation uh, component for mobile apps. Uh, what is interesting regarding MORE is that it collects hundreds of information during the, the mobile app mm. usage. And this information are passed to a server-side machine learning driven evaluation flow that provide a ve very detailed evaluation regarding uh, the risk uh, considering that specific device and that specific uh, moment. Uh, our goal is to protect the service, not the app as a static asset. Uh, lots of technology focused on the mobile apps is, is uh, facing mainly 
client side threats. So mm. is focusing on protecting the app from reverse engineering, from uh, tampering, but in the client side. We are focused on protecting the service. So this information has to go on the server side and we have to, to provide a full uh, autonomous evaluation of the risk in order to simplify the risk evaluation on our customer uh, side. So as you have seen during the demo, there is this uh, yeah. global risk uh, indicator that is very easy to read. Uh, red means high risk, medium, yeah. uh, medium and low, uh, low risk. And then you have a lot of uh, uh, detailed information regarding why that risk was produced.